Good evening once again. I'll call the Tuesday, January 14, 2014, Community RRA, CRA, Community Redevelopment Agency Board meeting to order at approximately 6.05 p.m. Roll call, Madam Clerk. Board Member Burgess. Here. Board Member Maldonado. Board Member Williams. Board Member Faircloth. Here. Board Member Waldman. Here. Vice Chairman Shelley. Here. Chairman Porter. Here. Any uh, delish additions, deletions, or deferrals? Uh, item one is approval of minutes. Move. Second. Any questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item two, Mr. Manager, staff report. <coughs> New vision of South Dade sponsorship request for 2014 MLK events. Uh, CRA staff recommends that the board direct the city manager to enter into a sponsorship agreement with New Visions of South Dade Inc. for support of two events to be held in conjunction with the 31st annual Dr. Martin Luther King Parade and Festival in Homestead in Florida City. The events are the 2014 MLK Pioneer Induction Ceremony at FICA Williams Community Center, Wednesday, January 15th at uh, between 6 and 9 p.m. The MLK Movie Night on the Park at Blakey Park, uh, Friday, January 17th, between 5 and 9 p.m. The total sponsorship request is for $6,492. The board has approved, uh, has supported New Vision of South Aid MLK events during the past two years. I move it. There's a second? Second. Any, any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, just for... Uh, Clarification uh, to the city attorney: As does a motion need to be made? I would need a, a motion, uh, a second, and then a, then. I thought yeah. I just did that. I he say I moved. Judy seconded. I know we do. We need the actual the actual motion. I think. Motion to approve. Is that just a motion asking? to approve is fine. Well, what did we just do? Was was your motion? Your motion was to approve. Yeah, at this two. time, and the second was made by Ms. Waldman. Do you want a roll call? No. No. So okay. All We're in good. favor. Thank you, sir. Um, line uh, tab three, excuse me, tab three. Miami-Dade College letter of intent to lease the Carrie P. Meek Center. CRA staff seeks direction from the board regarding Miami-Dade College letter of intent to lease the Carrie P. Meek Center. On September 30th, 2012, the CRA lease agreement with the Business and Technology Development Corporation expired. On December 12, 20, uh, 2012, BTDC vacated the Carrie P. Meek Center and the CRA began operating the center. On April 3, 2013, the city manager received a letter of intent from Miami-Dade College to lease the center for a term of 40 years at a rate of $1 per year. Staff is requesting the board direct the city manager to enter into negotiations with Miami-Dade College for the operations and programming of the Carrie P. Meek Center. If the board directs staff to proceed, a more detailed programmatic scope along with the terms of the agreement would be brought to the board for discussion and approval. Move it. Second. Probably Question. Second. Mr. Williams. Yeah. Um, I'm so appreciative, Mr. Mayor, that you have uh, given me the opportunity to continue to be a liaison to the Carrie Meek uh, Center. Um, we had dialogue, uh, I would say almost a year ago, if I'm not mistaken, on this, and uh, we had some philosophical differences uh, with what they were trying to do with the uh, Carrie uh, Meek Center. Um, uh, taking over, I've not heard anything else back other than what is in the uh, in our packet uh, and I think as a um, liaison to the care Phoenix Center uh, that uh, I, I'd be given some time and some consideration to look at it to be invited into some of the uh, the meetings to see if that uh, which we talked about months ago is still what their intent is for for the center uh, for Miami Day College. I have nothing against it, uh, but I just, if I'm going to be the person that is uh, liaison over it, uh, I'd like to have some more involvement in, in it. So this comes to me, not as a surprise, but uh, just to make the board aware of what my concern is, not really a concern, but I want to be involved in the process to make sure, because I had some uh, ideas and I mean, Dade College had some ideas, and I'm um, trying to meet in the middle of uh, philosophically to settle those differences. So I don't know if we've gotten to that point. Um, 
I know they will be, do a great job, but I just don't know exactly what the intent of how they're going to change perhaps what was done in the past um, and <laughs> what their uh, ideology is to go forward. So I'd like to have some input into that. Mr. Manager, can you expand on some of the intent that Mr. Williams is, I'll be prepared to talk about that tonight? Um, I, I do know that currently we're just asking for direction to start the negotiations. And I think the philosophical differences that the councilman is talking about were programmatic. Um, and that's something that we would definitely want to bring back to you for your input. Um, the terms, the type of the contract, that sort of thing is really where we're just at the, at the ground level. So I, I think you're going to have a lot of opportunity to opine and, and be part of the process. Um, if there's something that you'd wish to do a little bit differently, then I think we could take that direction. So you're, you're asking tonight for the opportunity for you to further in discussion yes. with Miami-Dade. We've, we've received the letter of intent. We have had discussions about what they would like to do, balancing both the needs of the business community and their programmatic needs as a college. Um, but nothing has been settled. There's nothing, you know, written down in concrete about exactly what that programmatic tact will be. So we are just starting the negotiations. We thought this was something that we wanted to get a little direction from and that we would bring back to you. Well, Mr. Mayor. Well, that's, that's, that's my whole point of, um, of what I'm saying. Um, is that um, you're right the problematic part of it was the philosophical difference and how you know the, the shape and change of the center would, would be um, and you know that's what I'm concerned with and so I, I like the opportunity uh, Mr. Mayor and council uh, members to be able to um, uh, be a part of the discussion um, and uh, uh, to bring back to us um, uh, that which I believe we all can agree on to make the care of me uh, business center better. I know when Miami Dade College, uh, you know, perhaps takes it over, it's going to be that. But I think um, we ought to have some per some some say so in it since we have been doing it for some time now. Mayor, we're happy to meet with any of you in terms of the you know programming ideas that you have. We have a general sense of what the college wants to do. In fact, we kind of uh, urge the college to get involved here because one of the uh, uh, goals that the council had uh, a couple of years ago that set for us as staff was to start working uh, more closely with the college and get them involved with city projects. So I'm really happy that the college was able to partner with us on this. But if anybody has an idea or visions, we're happy to meet with any of you. It would be helpful. The more input we get, uh, the better before we finalize the contract. Another question, please, Mr. Mayor. The tenants, uh, how many tenants do we have in the building now? Currently, there are three. Three. Um, and what are their roles have been in, in, in the building? Uh, they actually, we're negotiating right now some month-to-month agreements with them. Their agreement, their final agreements with the KRP Meek Center uh, at the end of the year have ended and we wanted to give them a chance to be in the building while we're negotiating because we're not here to hurt anybody. We don't know what the final form of this will take so that they can be in the building for the foreseeable future while we get the direction from, uh, from the board and uh, from the college. So they, they are currently in there and will continue to operate. So, uh, so their leases are up in the building. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Well, they never had uh, leases. They oh. had oper they had operating month -month agreements. Yes. Agreement uh, on paper. Yes. So, um, uh, and that is is up. You're saying. Yes. Okay. So, um, we wouldn't know if when Miami Dade College assumes the premise of the property, of what will happen or what will take place with inside. How much? Um, uh, how much say will this board have with the programmatic part of the 
I think that's something that we can't, we can't, I think at this point I couldn't give you a honest answer. That's something I think we need to work through in the negotiations. And if there is some specific requirements that any of the member board, uh, any member of the board wants to give us, that feedback would be extremely right. useful to us. But it, it's, I think it's pretty clear though for this to work for them, they're going to need to be able to operate a program and without a whole lot of city interference. So if there's certain policy goals that yep. you have for the program, we think we can work that into the dialogue. But in terms of who stays and who goes and what they're going to be doing on an annual basis operationally, they're really going to, once we sign a, an agreement with them, they're going to have uh, the facility. How long is the proposed agreement? Uh, it says a minimum of 40 years. That's their proposal. And so if, if you have any other ideas, certainly whatever feedback we get tonight would be helpful as we begin the negotiations. Well, may I explain to the board what my yes. reservations are, not uh, or concerns, not so much reservations. And I've articulated that what I, the role that I like to play in, uh, in this, uh, since uh, uh, they're given the opportunity to be the uh, liaison uh, to the Caribbean Meek Center. Now, what that does, what does that mean? To me, it means that it helps shape uh, uh, the things that's going to go in there. We're looking at a 40-year uh, lease uh, uh, of the building. Uh, that's we're all going to be expired by that time. <laughs> Vice Mayor. Yeah, I, I, I guess I remember having a meeting with Miami College, um, was quite some time ago, and it's kind of fuzzy now what we all discussed and talked about. I remember there was things that we discussed that I also programmatically, um, you know, had some suggestions and some ideas on. Some of it made me really excited in the potential and the possibilities. The only thing for tonight's discussion, I mean, I, I, have, I think it's great. I think it'd be a great partnership between Miami College and the city of Homestead and, and a business incubator type programming. So I support that 100%. But I think without without some sort of framework, without some sort of presentation, or some sort of uh, proposal by the college, it's very difficult to even have a basis or a starting point for negotiations. Because I can't say, I remember our conversation briefly, but it was fuzzy. So I mean, to me, I almost need a proposal from Miami Dade College to say this is, this is kind of what we envision. And then we, we as a council can then debate and discuss and say, okay, well, we like this, but we don't like that, or we like this instead. Because before, you know, I can't even get to the price point and the terms until I know what the programming is. So I, I, think, I, I think there's multiple steps here that need to be taken with, with our council involvement before we get to saying staff negotiate a deal. Because at some point you may get too far down the line, you come back to us and we may all say, we, that's not what we envisioned at all and now we've, we've wasted some time. So I guess I, I don't know where we, we go from this. I support it 100%. I think we need to work on it, but I don't know, if, you know, maybe bringing it back to us in steps. So you start the negotiations and then the first, you bring it back to us with this is the promatic um, proposal. And then at least then we can kind of weigh in on it. I, I don't, because where we are now is kind of, because what I have here in front of me is just terms on a sheet with, with a concept. So I think I need a little more meat on the bones. And I don't know if that was the intention of tonight, if there's a presentation to be presented for us to look at or whether that's something that's going to come back. I think the intent was to handle this like most other proposals where you give us a, uh, uh, in, in concept, uh, you're comfortable with us at least starting to put things on paper and have a formalized proposal to come to you for your consideration. And obviously, if there's things in there that you're not comfortable with, then they can be changed. Okay. I, I mean, I, which is fine, but it just, again, I think it'd be better to have at least a baseline, very vanilla proposal of, of programming or what they envision so that we can then build off of it upwards uh, versus having, you know, because right now I don't have anything in front of me. I just have this concept that Miami College, and I, and I know we've had conversations. I'm very excited about some of the things they proposed, but at this stage, I, I, don't, I don't have anything to even build off of. It's just a concept of letting them come in and operate the incubator. So I think for public purposes, I, for me to sit here publicly and say, I support or endorse or, or go forward with that, I think there needs to be something on the record for our residents and stuff to follow on to know what we're proposing. That's all. Any other questions? Ms. Waldman. I got the green light. <clears throat> I am 100% for the college coming in. Go to Dr. Jacobs <clears throat> way back. And, um, <clears throat> but yet I fully understand what Mr. Williams is saying. 
because when you are a liaison to um, uh, a project or in this case a center, you know he wants to be involved with, with uh, uh, you know to be able to answer the question we might have for him. So is there is it possible, Mr. Williams, to say let's move forward with the with the with the process with you being involved with some meeting? Um, with the manager and Dr. Jacobs and her team? Absolutely. I, I totally 100% support the college uh, <coughs> and them assuming the Kerry P. Meek Center. I have no problem with that. No, um, I think that we're all on the same page and Mr. Attorney, what do we need to do to... <coughs> We're having a consultation. Yeah, I think that the, the distinction is if, if the Council Williams wants to be involved in the discussions as opposed to making decisions regarding this, but I think the intention is that he'll be involved in the discussions, having input in the discussions, work with the manager on that as we have before, and we'll come back to the Council for final approval. I think that's all right. Uh, I, you know, I don't speak for Ms. Walmer or the, or the second of the motion, but I, obviously the board as a whole is the, is the final say on anything that the CRA does. And, and I believe Mr. Williams' concern is, is a valid concern because we try to, each person in ha at the council level or, or the board level tries to have some uh, association mm -hmm. with other entities that we're, we're working as a body for. So. Um, I, I agree with Mr. Williams' question, and, and not that it's not just a singular person's decision up here, it's the, it's the board's decision. And I just want to be clear that if, if any council member wants to meet with staff and give input or want to meet with uh, the college and give input, I'm totally comfortable with that. But if it's one specific council person involved with the negotiations, typically that's not the way uh, we've worked in the past. So I just want to make sure we understand the distinction of what this is. Well, let me say from, from my perspective, I think any of the board members have the opportunity to approach staff at any given time. Right. In this particular case, I think we just have a, a specific liaison to help all of us keep informed and bring back information to us. But at the end of the day, it's the entire board. That's the way I see it. And if anybody sees it any differently, then, you know, I think we can, we'll hash that out. But. Um, I think again, again, just it's a distinction between getting input from council members and having a specific council person involved with the negotiations of the contract. That's typically not let the me, way we operate. Mr. Williams. Let me ease George a little bit. I'm not, I'm not concerned about uh, the, the, so much of your contract or negotiation. I understand that's really... Um, in all respect, you know, a very sensitive area uh, for you. But I, what I'm saying is this is nothing different that we've not done in the past, that we have assigned council persons to be liaisons to um, the different projects to bring back a scope of to the board of this is, you know, what what we, you know, what, what I've found in, 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 in the dialogue with the, uh, with the college. And it does not stop any other council person from engaging in dialogue. Um, I'm not, don't want to make a decision. I don't want to deal with the lease agreement. I'm, I'm just saying that if, and this is, this is my concern, and, and maybe Mr. Mayor, maybe you can give me some, when you, may, I, when you make our assignments to different things, for instance, you assign me to the Care P. Meek Center, what is my obligation with the care of PB Center. If it's something that goes on with the center or something that of this magnitude, what is my responsibility as a liaison to the board? Well, I, I envision that as just each council person has the, has the um, uh, ability to keep a closer eye on that moving part of the, of the equation because there's seven of us up here. We all have a full plate 
they'll all have to deal with. So as long as each of us keep a particular eye on a particular area of, of responsibility, if you want to call it, that's my concept of the liaison. Well, that's all I was, I'm trying to do, nothing more uh, and nothing less. And so, uh, George, I, I'm not interested um, in shaping the contract. I'm interested in what takes place in the building and um, what, what Miami-Dade College is looking to do within the parameters and their whole concept of the Caribbean Meek Center, not the contractual. That is all you, <laughs> not me, but what happens in the shape of what goes in and, and the problematic part is what I'm concerned with. That's all. Uh, the problem is what I'm having with that is I don't know what that means in terms of who's going to be making the policy decision okay. of what's going to go in the documents and what's going to be presented to you. So it's if it's one specific council member sits in as we're discussing this with the entity, whether it's the college or anything that we do here, if that council person then ends up shaping whatever the policy decision is, that's one person in essence directing us. And typically that's not the way we've worked. We've worked where you as a group decide on the major policy issues and then uh, the liaisons, we brief, we fill them in, they're more interested in a particular issue. so. We have more staff involvement, but in terms of a council person coming in, sitting in on meetings while we're having discussions with the entity and weighing in on the policy decisions and shaping the negotiations, that is typically not something that we've done in the past. And the charter is pretty clear that, you know, you guys set policy and we negotiate. Okay, Vice Mayor. And, well, actually, I was, that was kind of the question I was going to raise because that's the only concern. I, part of my comments before were just that, and that is I think that that we, we don't have enough information yet to shape policy. So I think somewhere before you get full down, full blown negotiations, there needs to be another one of these meetings in which we actually hear something debated out amongst the council and send staff in a certain direction policy wise. But I also have the same concern, I guess, or that, that's one of my concerns too, is, is, is I wanna make sure that I, I also hear everything that was proposed. I wanna hear all the different programming, all the different options, and then I get to weigh in on it as well to make sure that, that the decisions are made up at this level, although I think it'd be great for you to be there as a liaison to, you know, if you, if, to, to walk with it or make sure as things are going and report back to, to staff, but when it comes to actual policy decisions, the type of programming, uh, the type of, of things that are being proposed, I, I want a part of that. I want to be able to also make that decision, um, yes, no, good, bad. Um, so that's so, only my only concern. So one thing we could do, which we've done in the past, is that the college can make a formal presentation to you, talk about all the programmatic uh, items uh, that they have in mind and then you as a group can decide on the, the policy items and then we will uh, craft a contract based on your policy decisions and as, as the liaison we're happy to keep the councilman informed and uh, meet with him on whatever uh, items he wants to discuss but in terms of the actual negotiating with them I just don't feel that one council person it's not been typical for one person to Sit in on those discussions. Is that all, Vice Mayor? Ms. Walman. Yeah, I, 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 maybe I mis, misspoke here because I want to make sure I didn't start anything that I didn't mean to. Um, it's my feeling from what I've heard from Mr. Williams. He just wants to be the liaison. He doesn't want to be. And tell me if I'm speaking out of turn. That he doesn't want to be a part of the of the contract negotiation. He doesn't want to be a part of any of that. He just wants to perhaps have a meeting with the college and with the manager and just hear your ideas maybe before you bring it to council, just so he is the, he is the true liaison and he's going to know what's going on before we sit down in these chairs. But I don't think he had any intention, correct me if I'm wrong, of getting into any of the manager's duties and, and uh, contract negotiations. Any, anything like that, nothing like that, just brief, just a briefing. Am I right? Yeah, you're right. You're okay. Right. So that should be everybody happy, I would think. Mm -hmm. No? Yep. No policy, nothing, just a, just a briefing. A briefing from who? But staff? Sit down with the college, sit down with you, sit down with staff. Let the college tell our liaison what their, you know, what their, what their you know, your dreams, your hopes of what you want to do with but in, all, in all fairness, the college has met with each and every one yeah. of you and has, 
has had a conversation about what they're planning. But it's been a planning. long time. Uh, yeah, you know, and Mr. Shelley said the same thing. I mean, it, it's been a long time since, you know, we've sat down and really talked. It's just giving, you just don't need to, to understand that we're responsible. So, and I don't know what I'm doing talking. I mean, it's, it's Mr. Williams' liaison. But it's, it's, it's and again, help me out here. Uh, you, you'll, you don't want to get involved in right, any no, way, stated, shape I've, at I've, all. I've stated that several policy. times. I've stated that several times. And, and, and um, I don't know how else to best articulate it. That, uh, what, you know, what my involvement of it. Can I give an example? Sure. I mean, for example, today, you know, I had several things on the, on the agenda on Parks and Recs. I called Dennis, and I said, hey, Dennis, give me a heads up on what's going on with this, 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 and this, so that when I get to the meeting, you know, if I need to do any research, I can t talk about it a little clearly, more clear, rather. So I think, I think that's all it is. And I think that would be the distinction, is that's typically how we've operated, at least yeah. in the last three years, is it's a council person to staff member but you're not meeting with a contractor to discuss how many, uh, how many uh, games they're going to run and uh, which courts they're going to use and, and discuss major policy issues. And the reason we don't do it that way is because if you say, I want 20 lanes and the rest of the board wants 30 lanes, that it becomes a problematic for us because we can't take direction from one specific council. No, I think, I, I think it's really been taken out of context. It really is, George. Uh, it's not so uh, complicated as you're uh, saying. And uh, this is not anything new that we've not done before. And so um, I'm done talking about it. Well, I, I will say that the liaison process, if you want to call it, is not a new process. We've been doing this for a while. The board is, you know, it's a body that has to represent the final say. And if we're going to have trouble with the liaisons, in this particular case, how many more other problems are we going to have? So the charter is very clear on our roles and responsibilities as council members. So in, in the essence of not recognizing what the liaison technically means yield to the charter, but because the charter is very clear on our responsibilities and roles in your day-to-day -day operations. So if we have a liaison to finance, or a liaison to CDGB, or a liaison to all these other entities that are functions of the city that are under your guidance as manager and our guide, only our guidance as policymakers. So, um, you know, we're going to navigate this on more than one occasion. So, I think it's very clear when we when we take a, a, a page out of the book, we look at the charter. Richard, chime in. So, so I don't think there's any. I don't think there's any opportunity for us, any of us, to come into your office and get involved in your day-to-day -day operations of the city. So I think that clears up the question. But I think at the same time, from, from this side of the dais, I think that we want to make sure that we have an individual from this side of the table with an eye on the ball, a, m a moving ball. And, and I think that's the, liaison, that's the way the liaison relationships have been in the past. And I'm hoping that that's what we have today. Yeah, I mean, as long as it's in keeping with what we've been doing over the last three years, that's fine. What I heard sounded a little different, so if, if that's what it was meant, then that's fine. I, th I think it was meant to be that way, and, 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 I, and I, ha I think I, I respect Mr. Williams' comment. You know, if he feels like he wasn't involved in the process, we need to do a better job. You know, we need to do a better job. So um, I think this, I think everybody's made it clear what the, what the direction is that we're interested in this, but we want to know more about it and we want to have some involvement. Is, is that clear? That's the motion that was made and the seconded. So that Ms. motion. I, Mayor, I'm sorry. Can you just kind of reiterate the direction that we're going in and just give me a minute to chime in on this. Um, I support Miami-Dade College. I have not had the opportunity to meet with you. We were going back and forth with some scheduling conflicts, but I'm a little perplexed with this process because I feel a little uncomfortable uh, approving or authorizing you to move forward with this when I have absolutely no knowledge of the vision for Miami-Dade College. So what I was going to suggest is that Miami-Dade College comes with a presentation and a proposal and then we move forward with that, giving our feedback and suggestions. But 
as far as the liaison role, I think it needs to be black and white, no shades of gray, because if Councilman Williams is the liaison for this entity, I think he should be a part of it in some form of fashion, however that is. I think that's the whole role or of, of being a liaison. I think he should be involved. But that's just my little spiel. I think they should come back with the presentation and proposal, and then we move forward from there. Ms. Wallman. Am I, and again, I just want to make sure I understand. Tonight is just to, just to say move forward with discussion. It's the presentation, as I understood it, and I may be wrong, was to come later. No, I, at this point, I think since there's so many questions, I think the college should come back at the next meeting and give a, a full presentation. Okay. And then, meanwhile, wh whoever wants to have conversations with the college or the staff, we're happy to have discussions. And, and at the next meeting, they can give a presentation. And... Uh, it, that'll be a springboard for discussion. Well, don't get discouraged now because we we love you. We want you. We want you there. I think there's a lack of clarity. It sounds like there's a lack of clarity. So we had a motion to approve. What what did the I'm motion? I'm going to keep my motion to approve. Motion to approve. You're going to keep your second. Okay. So the motion is to approve, furthering the discussion with Carrie P. Meek. And bringing back a potential agreement, potential contract. Actually, what we we think at this point is more appropriate is that you ha hear the college at the next meeting so that they can make okay. a presentation. Okay, so the college is prepared at the next meeting, next CRE meeting, to give a presentation on. on. Okay. If you if. Hold. Um. What were you gonna say? Uh, if you could, I, you know, just to chime in, I, I met recently with uh, Dr. Jean Jacobs, and I think what you guys want and what Councilman Williams is asking for is is what they they understand, um, what we want, and and of course we need to understand uh, what the college is supposed to do. And I spoke with uh, with uh, Rick, and um, what they're going to bring, at least in the, the beginning stages, is that discussion that we all want to hear, of how does it work. Miami Dade College with what we want, which is helping our business communities excel and giving them the tools for them to become better. And so, you know, in the past, we look at this building as an incubator and, and hence why those entities are there now that will incubate and grow. But I think the role seems to be changing in the sense of let's create a, a relationship with the community, with the college, excuse me. And uh, in regards to business and uh, and, and bringing tools and, and that we spoke about that and so I felt comfortable with that discussion I think if she just maybe just chimed in a little bit of maybe what we had or at least set the tone or make us feel more comfortable moving forward and, and and really all you're asking is just for us to move forward in discussion and I think we all want that so at least I would like that so Keep my motion. okay well the motion is on the floor so we'll 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 have uh, any, anything else. Would we, would we want to ask them to share a little bit now that we're here, or is it a time issue? Or is uh, it Dr. Jacobs, are, are you prepared to give any discussions as to your, your interest now, or, or? We could come, or. OK. Thank you very much. Good evening, uh, Council. Thank you for having us uh, this evening. I'd like to introduce to you also E.H. Levering, who is the Executive Vice Provost for Business Affairs at Miami-Dade College. And he's joined me to, as we talk about the intent to negotiate a lease. Um, first, let me just say that, you know, Miami-Dade has had a very, very good relationship with the city and a long relationship. Um, and as I think about the Carrie P. Meek Center for Business, it actually began with Miami-Dade College, Roy Phillips, Carrie Meek, who has been not only a great friend of the college, but who was part of the college and the city. So part of what we are looking at now is how can we, in fact, serve the small business community in this area. If you look at the South Regional Workforce and the pillars that they talk about, which are foundations for economic development, you know that that first 
pillar is to prepare the workforce talent and to educate them. And that's what we're in the business of doing. So we've been working a lot with the small business community for years. We have experience in doing so. As we look at the Carrie P. Meek Center, we're looking at opportunities to further help the small businesses in this area. And what does that mean? That means that we're looking at educational seminars and workshops, credit and non-credit programs, specifically geared toward the small business community. We collaborate and partner with the Economic Development Council, the Chamber of Commerce, and other organizations and entities to bring workshops and programming. Some of you may know that recently Miami-Dade College has been named as the institution to provide through Goldman Sachs 10,000 small businesses the programming for that for small businesses. What we propose is those types of programs that will bring the small business community into that center. There would be mentoring programs, one-stop resources. How do I develop a business plan? We believe we can assist in that kind of thing. Networking and expo events and workshops and certificates. We have an entrepreneurial certificate we currently offer that we would have in that particular space. So we have a number of ideas programmatically. And one thing just to share with you, Council, Councilman Williams, is that as I talked, I also understand the importance of relationships. And we're very inclusive at Miami-Dade College, Homestead Campus. I say that to say it will be critically important for us, and when I say us, I mean the college, I mean the city, and the business community to work closely together to look at programmatic needs of this community. And to that end, I would think it would be critically important for us to have a small group or committee, if you will, to serve in an advisory capacity as we're doing programming for the center. So those are just some ideas. We would certainly welcome the input from the city because it's going to be critically important for us. We want to be part of the solution. We want to make sure that the business community is very successful. And of course, we think it can be a win-win. So that gives you a general sense of what we're looking at programmatically. Um, I do have some general bullets and information that I've shared with some of you regarding the programmatic piece. It's general in nature. You understand today that educational institutions have to be flexible and nimble because needs change. So what I'm rolling out is what we see here and now. Long term, I think together we can look at other programs and opportunities we might want to bring to that center. But I'm here to answer any questions that you may have regarding the programmatic aspect. In terms of the other matters, Mr. Levering is here. Vice Mayor. Thank you, Mayor. Um, it's coming back to me now. It's been so long. I know we, we sat down to have conversations, and I forgot that I'd actually gone up, I think, to North Miami to, I think you have an entrepreneurial academy of some kind up there that I actually went up, met with, and, and saw. And, and um, so it's coming back to me. I remember some of these things now, and it, it, is, it is very exciting um, what you were doing at that particular facility and some of the programming as you were speaking. So um, thank you for getting up and speaking and refreshing my memory. So. You're welcome. Mr. Williams. Uh, Dr. Jacobs, let me first say this that um, um, your track record has spoken uh, for you and uh, nor do I want you to uh, get the impression uh, that um, I'm not supportive of the of the intent of what you're trying to do because I, I, I am very supportive um, and I really think um, that we're not too far apart in, in our ideology and, and thinking. Um, but I think somehow the, it got shifted to where the city manager believed that uh, I will be taken over to negotiate something, which is not my intent. My intent was when I shared with you in the office uh, months ago, a 
about what the opportunities that you were bringing there and, um, and we shared back and forth. And so um, um, I unequivocally uh, respect and know that Miami Dade College is going to uh, make the Care Peak Meek Center uh, excel in, in so many different directions. Um, and so as the, the liaison part of it is what my question was to my colleagues. Um, and uh, and how do we move forward with that? And so uh, I have no, um, you know, I have no uh, question uh, that uh, that your openness uh, to all of the board um, would not be anything uh, but par excellent. So you know, my only concern was uh, what was my role as the incubator liaison. So. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. What I'm going to do now is we have a motion on the floor uh, for approval to direct staff to, to move forward with uh, negotiations with the college, correct? Okay. First and second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Motion carries. Do we have any new business to the board, from the board? Um, I, I would just like to let the board know that um, today the uh, CRA 2014 budget passed through the Finance Commission at the county, uh, committee at the county with no questions or, or, or concerns, and we'll be bringing it to the full commission next month. Thank you. Great. Is there any uh, public comment to the CRA board at this particular time? Seeing none, uh, is there a motion to adjourn? Is there a second? All in favor? Motion carries. Meeting adjourned. Thank you.